In our continuing series, Up From a Past, African American First, I had an opportunity to chat with Smokin' Joe Frazier. He and Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest rivalries of all time, in and out of the boxing ring, both won Olympic gold and later the title. But Frazier did it as a heavyweight both times. It's been almost 30 years since his last fight, but Smokin' Joe still has his jab. Joe Frazier, sparring with me, even in just, is a long way away from this. His heyday, 37 fights, 32 wins, 27 of those knockouts. And who can forget the fight of the century, the one time he snatched the title from trash-talking arch-rival Muhammad Ali. Everybody that watches him train says no contest. You better not fight like that with Ali. Do you miss the ring? What ring? I got a ring on. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a good, you're a jokester. Yeah. You know what ring I'm talking about. Boxing. Well, no, um, I I'm still over the gym. Loving the gym and loving the sport. The first American boxer to win both the Olympic gold medal and the professional world title in the heavyweight division. But up until the age of 37, Smoking Joe oh, kept chasing the heavyweight title. You kept coming back. You you wouldn't go I away, man. I never went nowhere. It's <laughs> coming back. Where'd I go? Sounds a lot like the real-life version of Rocky Balboa. Was there a lot of you in that character, Rocky? Sure. I'm glad that I uh, work at the slaughterhouse. I'm the guy that ran the streets of Philadelphia. Philly is where, after all these years, Frazier has settled devoting his life to his boxing gym, keeping young people in the ring and off the streets of a city with one of the nation's highest murder rates. That gym keeps a lot of trouble from going on in the street because the young man themselves have a place to go to like whip off that anxiety, whip off that hate. Is that for at least young people now? Is that your mission to look after young people? I don't mind working with the kids. The kids is tomorrow. And if we don't do what we're supposed to do for them now, how you expect them to carry on? Frazier says he learned that lesson in his own youth, growing up poor in the South. I'm up from the South with animosity, bigotry, hatred, you name it. Uh, you know, uh, the food wasn't there for us, but we were working on the farm and stuff like that. But therefore, like, you know, uh, I come from that the white hate and the black hate and whatever. Let's talk about you were coming up during that time. Okay. And you've seen, you've seen the change in civil rights and how you were dealt with and things that you had to deal with coming up. And then all of a sudden now, we've got a black president. Well, I, I never would have thought that I would see the day of that. But therefore, I'm, I'm happy that it happened. I think he's a fine gentleman. I think he did a fine job. As an African-American first, Joe Frazier has experienced more triumph and more pain than most. His six brothers are all gone. It's reported that he's lost his boxing fortune, but he's hung on to his sense of humor. Ain't no sense in going home. Judy got you curling gone. <laughs> Had a good job, but you worked too hard. <laughs> he's got a good voice. <laughs> you got a good voice. I like that music, man. He likes the music, and America loves Smoke and Joe. What did they scream when you came out? They didn't stay on smoke. <laughs> that ain't no bear. <laughs> that was Smoke and Joe Frazier. Right <laughs> <laughs> smoke and Joe, you still got it, brother. Uh, ever wonder why or where Frazier got the nickname Smoke and Joe? Well, in the earlier days of his career, his trainer used to say before the fights, go out there and make smoke come from those gloves. So there you have it. And I have to mention this. You can see Smoke and Joe Frazier and other boxing greats next Saturday. HBO is airing the documentary called The Thriller in Manila, April 11th, 8 p.m. Eastern. You don't want to miss that.